there friend and welcome back to my channel. This is a Notion template walkthrough, but this is a Notion template for a particular group of people. This is an educator and teacher Notion template. I am a private tutor in my day job and there is a template that I have been using that has been a game changer for helping me keep track of my resources, the things that I teach, the different classes that I cover, as well as my students. And what better time than to share this template with all of the educators out there who are getting ready for a new school year. So go ahead and check out this walkthrough and if this is something that you're interested in, don't forget to head to the description below to check it out. If you've got any questions or comments as you walk through it, anything that you feel as an educator would be helpful for you to add to this template, feel free to let me know. And who knows, maybe by the time you download it, it'll be something I've worked in. But go ahead and check out this walkthrough of my educator and teacher Notion template. So the template that I'm gonna be showing you is very, very similar to the one I use in my day job. I just don't necessarily wanna to go too much into this template that I'm using right now for my day job because I have my students in it and privacy. Um, but I will give you a little bit of a glimpse into kind of how it works and how it's set up. So let's go ahead and let's check out the template. As you can see, I've got 80 bajillion templates that I've created. Um, but first and foremost here, we've got our menu. And what our menu is, is it's basically just all the different databases that make the template run. And then over here, we've got our look into the future. So let's go ahead and start with this look into the future here. What we've got in this guy here is we've got first and foremost a this month's view, which shows all of the tasks that you have for the month. You've got a today view, which shows you all of the tasks that are due on or before that particular day. And this is a dynamic view. So it updates as you, you know, as you use it. Um, and then we've also got something showing our current classes and any of the planned lessons that we have for our classes. And this adapts very, very well if you are a tutor or if you were an in-classroom tutor. So definitely something that you can make do and make work despite, you know, it's definitely something you can make work no matter what kind of education you are doing. So these first guys are mostly driven by our tasks database. So let's go ahead and start there. So first we've got here our tasks template here. And this bracket TTT is just so I know that this task template goes with this particular template here. So here, what we've got is similar to the other view. We've got this month, we've got it today. These are the exact same views as we had on the first page. But basically what this is, again, is it is a tasks database. So we have a place to check off when a task is completed. We've got the name of the particular task when we wanted to have it done. And then you can also link up your tasks to your notes, your projects, your students, and your classes. And I'll kind of show you, you know, how this works in terms of like how it would work streamlined as you are using it. But this is the first thing. So obviously, no matter what you're going to do, you're going to have tasks. That is inevitable. So that's what this guy is for. But now let's go ahead and look into classes, because no matter what kind of education you do, you're going to have topics that you teach. You know, if we were to look at mine, let's actually just go ahead and pull that up. Um... If we were to look into my Notion template that's very, very similar, I have my current classes, which are current topics that I am actively tutoring in. You may not have this many topics. You may have more topics. Who the heck knows? But that is kind of what this classes guy is meant to be, is to show all of the classes that you are currently teaching. So if we go in here to this view, we can see all of our in-progress classes here. And you can see this is set up to show you the start slash end date of the class the number of students and the number of lesson plans that you have for that class. So this really allows you to make a true game plan for your class as you are preparing for it. This is also another view where you can see every class. And then this is a list view of every class, or I guess this is a table view of every class as well. So anytime you have a new class that you want to create, you just go ahead and you click this new button. It's going to automatically apply this template to that task. You can add anything you want to these templates too later on, but this is just a good starting point. So you can put whatever the name of your class is. Maybe you're teaching, I don't know, maybe you're teaching calculus or maybe you're teaching, let's actually do a science. Let's say you're teaching biology. You go in here and you can say, has the class started yet? If not, we're going to change to this. If it has started, you're going to go ahead and put it here. And if it's a class that's done, you probably wouldn't be adding it. But once your classes are complete, you can go ahead and change this to done. Then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put in your start and your end date. So let's say maybe um, your semester that you are teaching for your students starts on the 21st and it ends, you know, the 15th or 16th of, oopsies, I did this wrong. <laughs> I need to toggle on end date. So let's say we start on the 21st of August. Let's toggle on end date. And let's say it ends on December 15th. That's what I meant to do initially. And so now you can see inside of here, let's go ahead and let's add like a cover photo. Let's say, um, we'll do something like, we'll do something like that. Those are, those are kind of some cool, looks like they're immune cells. 
Um, and so here, what we can go ahead and do is we can start planning out our lessons. So we've got a place where we can start adding lessons. And as you create lessons, so we'll just call this bio lesson one, as you create those lessons, then you can go ahead and you can assign when you are going to be teaching them. So let's say the first bio lesson you are going to be teaching is going to be on that August 21st. And you can see, I'm going to go ahead and collapse this down that here it is not only displaying the lesson, but it's also displaying when you're gonna teach it. And we can set this up, which this probably wouldn't be a bad idea, to sort based on the teaching date. So that could be a very, very handy thing to sort by. You can also go in and you can start adding your students. So this probably isn't something that maybe if you are a professor at a college that you might wanna do, but maybe if you are a high school teacher, you would wanna go in and add the students that are in that particular class. And what this is going to do is we, we'll just call this guy bio student one. You can put in their, their grade level. So maybe this is an 11th grader. Uh, maybe they haven't quite started yet. For the next test date in the notes, I mostly use this for my students that I'm doing private tutoring with. So maybe you don't want to use this if you are a classroom teacher, but if you are a private tutoring um, if you do private tutoring, then I'll show you how I use this. But then maybe you have a place where you put in whatever your notes are for that student. Then if you were to go in and look at that student's profile, you would see that they are associated with biology and all of that stuff that you've gone in and added here applies to them. So that's kind of how this works. And then you can also go in, you can add any tasks that you have. Maybe one of your tasks is like revise slide deck. for bio lesson one and you want to have this done you know two weeks before the class and then you want to go ahead and associate it let's actually go ahead and also associate this with a lesson as well you'd say bio lesson one and there we go now it's associated with everything it needs to be associated with awesome so that's kind of the classroom view and again you can add anything you want to this view that you want to but let's also go ahead and look at our next database so that's kind of your classes how you can modify and add stuff to your classes now let's go ahead and look at our students now for your students how this is organized right now is into active paused inactive rematched all students and then all sat math students so the reason why it's organized this way is this is kind of how i use it as a tutor so I have students that I am actively working with. So a student here would have a status of active. We call this like active student one. And we've got all of those same parameters here. So I can say what grade they're in. I can say when their next test date is. So if I am working with a private tutoring student for, you know, biology or for SAT, I can say when their next test date is. I can say what time zone they're in. I can say the name of their advisor because we have advisors at the company that I work with. But if you are a classroom teacher, a lot of this stuff might not be particularly really relevant to you. So as a classroom teacher, maybe what you want to do is you want to go in and you want to edit the status property so it's just not started active and inactive or active and completed or whatever it might be. You can streamline these statuses and you can go in and you can delete a lot of these properties or just hide a lot of these properties that you don't feel like you're going to be using. All of your students are going to be in the same time zone all of your students are probably gonna have the same test date if you're a classroom teacher. So there's definitely properties here that you aren't necessarily going to use if you are a classroom teacher. So like a lot of these ones you might not use and you could just go in and delete these particular views. But this other one here, I wanna go ahead and point out what these can be used for is they can help you organize your students by class. So this student here is an SAT math student. We could also go in and we could do a all biology students or something like that. And then we can filter by the students that are in my biology class, for example. So you can filter them by topic as well, which if you are a classroom teacher, that can be a very, very handy way to filter your students as well. So there's a lot of properties in here. Some might be applicable to you. Some might not be. If you're ever unsure, hey, can I delete this without breaking the template field? please feel free to comment below, ask, and I can give you an answer. So that's kind of our student database. Um, and then the next thing we've got is our lesson plans database, which you've kind of already seen me using here. So for our lesson plans, we're going to have lesson plans that maybe we are, um, maybe we are just brainstorming or lesson plans that we are planning on using. So for example, when I'm tutoring SAT math, inevitably I teach students how to break down word problems. So this is going to be something that I am actively going to be using. So we'll say it's in progress. We'll say when we want to teach it. 
Um, we'll say what class we're teaching it to. And again, if you're a private tutor, you might also designate which students you are teaching it to, which you can go in here and add your students here. So that could also be something that you do as well. Now, we also have places to store our lesson ideas, our completed lessons, and our archive lessons. So lessons that we aren't using anymore, but maybe we don't want to delete, we can go ahead and put them here. So some lesson ideas, maybe you've got our bio lesson. Let's actually change that to taught. But let's say we've got a lesson ideas for how to use the quadratic formula for like pre-calculus class. You can just have this in here as an idea, and then you can decide when you're going to teach it later. We've also got a place for the completed lessons, as well as for any archive lessons that maybe you're not doing anything with. So this is a great way for you to not only brainstorm, but also to start kind of keeping track of where you're at with teaching these lessons and for building a database of potential ideas for how you can teach something. Now you'll see here, it says topics and resources. We're gonna talk about those in just a second. So don't worry too much about those right now, but you'll also see that it says class start slash end date. What it's actually doing is it's actually pulling that information in from the class guy over here. So this is the SAT math class. I said it starts slash end date was June 30th to the June 30th, 2023. Basically what that is, is that is what's called a roll-up property. And it is pulling this information in from your SAT, from your class that you have selected. So same thing over here. If we say pre-calculus has the class start and end date, it's pulling from pre-calculus. For biology, the class start and end date is also pulling from the biology class. So that's where that's coming from. So we can design our classes via lesson plans, or what you can also do is you can brainstorm based on resources or based on topics. So the resource database, I actually, how I highly recommend using this is to use the save to Notion Chrome extension. So if we were to type in Notion Saver Chrome extension, put this guy right on the top here, this is the Chrome extension that I actually find to be the most useful. So once you find this, go ahead and add it to your Chrome. Mine says remove from Chrome because I already have it. Go ahead and click add to Chrome. And then once you do, let's say you are brainstorming on the internet for like biology teaching materials or something online. This is actually opening up a rabbit hole. So let's say maybe what I wanted to do is I wanted I was going to be eventually teaching um, something about the different chromosomes. And what I wanted to do was to show my students a picture of chromosomes. So like maybe chromosomes teaching materials or something like that. Um, and maybe you use Teachers Pay Teachers a lot. That's a great resource that we can use. So um, personally, I like to check out the free resources first. So let's see what we've got going on under free here. You can go in and you can say, okay, basic genetics and chromosomes, vocabulary, dominoes, or DNA chromosomes, genes, for virtual lab. Okay, I like this. So then what we can go ahead and do, once we find a piece that we like, a resource that we like, we can go ahead and we can click the Save to Notion button. I'm going to move my face out of the way. And... What, we're, what you're gonna have to do first and foremost is you're gonna have to create a new form where you tell it where you want it to save. So when you do that, you're just gonna wanna click on whatever the name of your Notion system is and tell it that you want the resources database, okay? So I've already done that. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click into resources and you can see it already pulled in the name of this website. It already pulled in the content image. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the resource template and then I'm gonna click save page. And what this is going to do is once we go in over here to the resources page, you can see it already. It has pulled in this new resource from this page here and it's given it a name. It's the DNA chromosomes and genes virtual lab. It has this URL. We can go ahead and tell it the class is biology and we can maybe say that the lesson plan is what are chromosomes or something like that. That is the name of our or maybe we want to call it the DNA chromosomes and genes is the name of our lesson plan. All right, cool. So we can very, very easy, basically the whole idea with this is we can very, very easily pull in resources online using these Notion tools to start building a resource library for us so that we constantly have material that we can pull from to help us teach. That's really what this is all about. You can also go in here and you can add in some topics and maybe the topic here and you can have multiple different topics for the same um, for the same resource. So maybe the topic here is DNA or it helps if I spelled this correctly, chromosomes, or maybe your topic is also genetics or genes. There we go. 
I have no idea why this one didn't get a star, but the rest of them did. So now we've got different topics now that are associated with this particular resource. So with that, so that is a great way to start planning your lessons as well. But we also have our topics database. Now, the reason why I have a topics database and a, um, and a resources database is the resources are really the things that you are using to teach the material and the topics are the actual specific things that you are teaching. That's kind of the difference between them. And so we kind of, there's a place for both when you're planning a lesson. So you can see here, we already have these three that are topics that are related back to this resource. And we can also go ahead and associate these three topics with this lesson. And we can associate these three topics with this class as well. So we can start to really organize our topics here. I actually even think it might be a good idea to make a new view, maybe a board view where things are grouped by class. Let's go ahead and group them by classes. Beautiful. And there we go. We can start to see we're building a list of topics and we're building a list of resources that are related to those topics, which is going to make it so much easier and going to make you so much more organized. The last things we've got in here are things that are really going to be more for um, things that are going to be more for your your own kind of personal and professional development. So a project status tracker, for example, maybe you're working on a new certification or something related to kind of professional development. Create that as a project, and then you can go in and you can track your progress on that project when it's completed, your target deadline, your progress. So like, for example, with this certification, we've got the different tasks and notes that are associated with this project. And then as we check off or uncheck tasks here, oops, we can't see it. There we go. As we check off or uncheck tasks here, you can see this progress tracker guy is keeping track of how we're doing for the pursuit of that project. So it's a really, really handy way for us to see the different projects and how we're doing toward those different projects. So that's really helpful as well for us to have inside of this dashboard. And then last but not least, our notes, because inevitably you're gonna be taking notes as well, maybe at parent-teacher conferences or in any preparation you do for parent-teacher conferences, something similar to that, you're gonna be in meetings. And we've actually got a um, template inside of here where you can take notes on your particular meeting and Inevitably, there might be some tasks that come up that you need to do as well. And you can add those tasks in here and they get added to your to-do list back here. So it's all interconnected. It's all nice and synchronized as well, which is very, very handy. Now, I'm already kind of noticing that we've got our current classes here and we've got them over here, but they're taking up a ton of room over here. So what I might personally recommend doing, and I think I'm just going to remove it from the template, let's just take that guy out. So then we just have our projects and our notes over here to keep things nice and simple and streamlined. Once you can start filling this up, what it's going to start to look like for you is it is going to start to look like this, where I've got my, my menu, I've got my different projects that I'm working on, I've got all of my meeting notes down here, and then I've got my tasks that, are, that I'm working through as well. I've also got, you know, my current classes that I'm teaching, so I can really keep tabs on and see all of the different things I have going on in here. I have a small group course I'm teaching right now, I have a digital PSAT student, I have a pre-calculus student all of these different types of things that I have going on here that I can go ahead and use to stay organized and stay on top of things. And that is it. That is the end of my walkthrough of my educator and teacher notion template. I hope it inspired you. I hope it gave you some ideas. If you're like, oh my God, I need this. Well, you are in luck because the link to this template is in my description below. So go ahead and check that out. Again, if you've got any questions and comments, please feel free to leave them below. And if you are loving this template, go ahead and like, comment and subscribe. I will also be back with more of my personal systems for how I use Notion in my day-to-day -day life. Also, stay tuned for a student Notion template coming up as well. That is something I provide to my private tutoring students. But with that, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you for being forgiving of the fact that I did not feel like getting ready for this video at all. And I'm rocking a baseball hat. <laughs> and with that, I will talk to you all soon. Bye.